Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. Fight number three, Brian Battle versus Renat Fakradinov. Brian Battle's got size and youth. He's got two inches of height, three inches of reach, and he's three years younger. Renat Fakradinov, who's 31 years old, entering his prime right, or probably smack dab in the middle of his prime, he's got experience over Brian Battle. He's got a record of 19-1 and one or 20-2, and two, depending on who you ask. And even though it's over a largely garbage opposition, garbage opposition, the majority of it, there's still some valuable fights there. And the reality is he's been training and fighting for much longer than Brian Battle, for twice as long. You know, 10 plus years versus 5 plus years for Brian Battle. Uh, Renat is 19 and 1. Uh, let's just say that, you know, even though Tapology says 20 and 2. Regardless, the only people to beat him are solid Euro Eastern European or Russian fighters. Solid fighters. And they beat him by decision. And his wins, 19 or 20, regardless, he's got only three decisions 16 or 17 finishes. 11 via KO, 5 via submission, and, you know, only a few of them over some good names, but still, uh, even fighting garbage names, it's an impressive finishing rate. As far as the names he's beaten, he choked out Alberto Uda, who I thought that was his last name when he fought in the UFC, turns out that's a nickname, but he choked him out with a guillotine choke. Five submissions, by the way, four of which come via guillotine choke. It is absolutely his move. And um, who else did he beat? He knocked out Eric Spicely as well before coming to the UFC. Which, that's a very nice victory, but Spicely is a chinny fighter. Let's face it. So, uh, he was a chinny fighter in the UFC, and he's only gotten older. And uh, after that, he took out... Andreas Mikolidis in the UFC beat him by decision, and that was an, a very impressive performance because Fakradino fought the exact opposite of the way I thought he would fight, and he showed some things. He showed a ground game. He showed cardio. He showed something else. I don't know, but uh, he showed some things, and even though it wasn't the prettiest victory, I thought we learned a little more about him as a fighter. And it was nice to see, even in a winning effort, that he could go hard for three rounds. Brian Battle, on the other hand, he's an inexperienced guy, 8-1 and one record, but it's deceptively good experience. He's got 8-1 and one as a pro, but two wins on the Ultimate Fighter that don't count, and they're over two of his best, you know, two of his better opponents. His best one, Andre Petrosky, he submitted in round two, and also Kemron Lachinov, who's, you know, or Lachinov who's, uh, you know, a decent fighter. Also, uh, he submitted Gilbert Urbina to win the Ultimate Fighter. He is an Ultimate Fighter champion. I probably should have opened with that. But that's Brian Battle's game. He's a guy that I think if he wins, you know, uh, 10 fights, at least five of them are going to be second round submissions, you know, if not eight of them. He's a guy that will wear you down, strangle you, uh, you know, suck the life out of you and strangle you over time. He's got really good chokes. He's like an anaconda, speaking of chokes. You know, just sucking the life out of you and doing using his size to do so. Even at middleweight, that was his game. He's a long, tall fighter, and he's got leverage in the clinch up against the cage, and he smothers guys and sucks the life out of them. He did drop down to welterweight. That's where this fight is. These guys are down at welterweight. And once he dropped down to welterweight, he knocked Takashi Sato out with a head kick, which was an awesome new wrinkle for Brian Battle and a uh, really good uh, sign for what's to come at welterweight. Not that I think he's going to be some power striker, certainly not with his hands, even though he does throw down and, you know, he's a big guy, he hits hard, but his kicks have been his best weapons, I think, uh, on the feet and... In particular, his body kicks, but still, getting a head kick knockout over Mr. Knockout Artist himself, Takashi Sato, that was awesome, and Brian Battle's still young and getting better, and I'm excited for him, no doubt about it, he's got a high ceiling, but uh, he does have, you know, again, I said deceptive experience, he's got an amateur career, I think like 6-2 and two or something, valuable wins there over Cody Brundage, who's fighting on this card, and also Impa Kasang and I. Made it to the UFC. But his first loss, his first fight as an amateur was a knockout loss at heavyweight. It's on YouTube. Brian Battle looks like he's 250 pounds and he gets knocked dead. 
Again, it was at heavyweight, so I'm not saying, oh, it's a strike against his chin, even though it kind of is. But, you know, it's forgivable getting knocked out by a monster. But really, I feel like it's, uh, it's a testament to how ballsy this guy is, getting knocked dead like that and then getting up and saying, I want to do this shit for a living. So I like Brian Battle. I like the way he fights, the way he tames, you know, athletes and stuff, like that Petrovsky fight. And I like the way he, you know, uh, is developing into a fighter. You know, he's definitely a guy that will break fighters over time, over the course of 15 minutes. And now, at welterweight, I feel like he's going to start tailoring everything to his size. And, you know, he will be more effective, I think, as a striker. Maybe not so much in this one, but overall, I think... His striking is going to come together pretty well, Walter Wade. Anyway, uh, let's get into it. I think, oh, his loss. I should address his loss. Brian Battle does have a loss, though. It's three years ago, and it's to a guy whose name I don't know. He lost to a guy whose name I knew a few hours ago and then forgot. This guy has no name or profile, and he submitted Brian Battle three years ago. Of course, everything I just talked about and praised Brian Battle for happened since that submission loss, so it's not like I want to live by this submission loss here, but it did happen, and I still feel like it speaks to a weakness in his game, because it's only been three years, and you can't patch up giant holes in three years, not that it was a giant hole, but I'm saying it wouldn't surprise me at all if it's still a weakness for his, I'm looking for potential weaknesses, and a submission loss to a no-name guy three years ago inside of round one jumps out at me. More so than the knockout at heavyweight does, to be honest. But uh, Fakhradinov, you know, uh, he's not Mr. Submission Artist, not by any means. He's only got five subs. Four of them are via guillotine. And Brian Battle did leave himself open for a guillotine against Treshawn Gore in round two. So I've had it in my head. It's a possibility Fakhradinov gets a submission, especially in the middle of a war, which if he fights his fight, this will degenerate into a war. So overall, I like Fakhradinov to win the fight. There are no prop bets available, but I like his money line at minus 145 because I think he would win the point battle unless he's smothered in the clinch against uh, Brian Battle, with Brian Battle against the cage. But in general, I like his pressure to win the point battle. I think he's got a better chance of a knockout, and that's only because I haven't seen him knocked, you know, I haven't seen him knocked out at all or knocked around Fakhradinov. I just don't know that much about him as a fighter. And as little as I trust what he has offensively, I also doubt anything, uh, any hole in his game physically. I, I doubt, you know, I don't think he's got a weak chin. He's got to prove it to me. Brian Battle does, I guess. And I don't think he's weak submission-wise. You know, I think, uh, at least in the Michaelitis fight, I liked what I saw from him, although that was 15 minutes of top control. So... Overall, I like Fakhradinov to win the fight. I would think he wins the point battle. There are all these little in-betweens where if he gets Brian Battle uncomfortable, I think he knows who he is as a fighter, and he's got things like that guillotine choke that could uh, find a path to victory for him. So I'll take Fakhradinov at minus 145. My heart's not totally into it, and um, that's why it's not a big bet at all. But I'm betting on his experience. I'm betting on his experience, and one thing I know about him is he's going to win the... Uh, octagon control battle. You know, I think he'll be moving forward more against Brian Battle than Brian Battle is against him. We'll see how it goes. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit. Check out my other videos.